Amazon's Kindle, an environmentally friendly option for avid readers. E-readers first emerged in 2004 with the Sony Library, well, at least the first completed e-reader. The first concept of an electronic device able to read multiple books at any given time was first imagined in 1930 by American writer Bob Brown. The history of e-readers is extensive, starting with an ID in 1930, evolving into pro prototypes in 1949 throughout the 1960s, 70s, up until the 2000s. Nowadays, Amazon's Kindle is the most popular e-reader on the market, and for avid readers, it is an environmentally friendly alternative to paperbacks. For readers who often buy brand new books, read over 23 books a year, and want to read more, Amazon's Kindle is an option that will change your reading habits and save the earth while you're at it. This analysis will cite studies and research that will shine light on the, de on the debate of which is more environmentally friendly, paper books or e-readers or cell phones, as well as look into what goes into Amazon's Kindle marketing strategy. The answer depends on the reader themselves, but simply put, e-readers are favorable for avid readers, while paperbacks and phones are better for light readers. In 2004, the Sony Library was released, which is what many consider to be the first e-reader, but only in Japan. Seeing its success, CEO Jeff Bezos instructed Amazon's secret hard hardware lab employees to start working on the world's best e-reader before a competitor could. Amazon, which started out as an online bookstore in 1994, was the perfect company to make an e-reader. They had over a million cu customer accounts, had billions of dollars in revenue to use for marketing, and owned a secret hardware lab called the Lab 126 who could work on a brand new e-reader. The Kindle One sold out within hours and it was a huge success in the USA. Matter of fact, it was so high in demand that people weren't, weren't able to buy it for another five months after its release. The $399 USD price tag, which is the equivalent of $670 Canadian today, put Kindle out of reach for a lot of people. But soon as, after its initial release, Amazon was the biggest brand name in the e-reader market. Kindle's success spawned some competition, like Barnes & Noble's e-book reader Nook, or Sony's e-book reader Kobo. When Kindle was released, it was so popular that it essentially drove a lot of other e-readers out of business. In 2018, 83.6% of the e-reader market belonged to Amazon's Kindle. In other words, Kindle's biggest competition are not any other e-readers, it is rather paperback books and cell phones. This is because the large majority of books that people read are paper books, and although e-books have been on the rise for a long time, people are reading them on their smartphone rather than a designated e-reader like Kindle. E-readers and e-books still fall behind printed books, but e-books are on the rise. Due to their availab availability, cost, and efficiency, more and more people are starting to read e-books. The COVID pandemic made people read a lot more. A survey conducted in April 2020 asked Canadian adults with more free time during the first lockdown how they were feeling in that time. 40% said, said that they were reading more. This reading habit transformed the question for Kindle from, how, how can we get people to read? to, what device will people use to read? These three products each have their own environmental issues. A study from McMaster University in Ontario has shown that cell phones are the most damaging devices for the environment. Cell phones consume some energy to operate, but the biggest environmental impact comes from the production. Making phones requires companies to mine precious metals which, according to Liverpool University professor Patrick Byrne, is one of the main causes of the, of the deforestation in, in the Amazon. The environmental impact of paperback books come from, comes from the unsustainable amount of trees that are cut for production versus the amount of books that are replanted. For example, on the worldwide scale, humans cut down approximately 15 billion trees a year and only replant 5 billion. Pulp and paper mills are the second largest energy consumers in greenhouse gas emitters in Quebec, accounting for 11.9% of Quebec's greenhouse gas emissions. Could e-readers be a more environmentally friendly option? Initially, e-readers have a mu much higher toll on the environment than printed books, but having an e-reader is more environmentally friendly if you replace 22 brand new paper books with digital books. This means, for a heavy reader who buys several brand new books each year, an e-reader is a good option. Almost everyone has a cell phone, so why should anyone buy an e-reader? Studies have shown that on average, people who read e-books read more than people who read paper books. People who read ebooks read on average about 10 books a year, while non ebook readers read on average 4 books. E readers use an e, e ink technology, making it less stressful for your eyes to read on, on an e reader than to read on a phone. 
Ebooks made make reading efficient and easy, and offers a catalog of books on demand for a cheaper price than paperbacks. Take it from readers themselves. 75% of people who own an e-reader say that they own it because it's convenient. And also, 35% of e-reader owners say that they've been reading a lot more since they started reading e-books. The contrast of these ads of the ads are very apparent. Kindle's ads uses emotion and themes of community, showing how powerful books can be. It also shows how easy it is to buy a book on Kindle and then be able to read it anywhere. Kobo, on the other hand, just highlighted the product's quality. Strengths. Kindle is affiliated with Amazon and promoted by them. Amazon being one of the most popular brands in the world gives Kindle a huge boost. Weaknesses. An e-reader is not a real book and will never be one. There are a lot of readers who prefer reading on paperback books over e-readers. Opportunities. Climate change. As stated earlier, paper mills are a huge maker of greenhouse gases. Kindle can use this to, the, to their advantage by promoting Kindle as a product for, for readers to help cl combat climate change. Threats. One threat is people reading e-books on cell phones and never feeling the need to buy a designated e-reader to read on. Our marketing agency is called the Bookworms. Our, our mission is to get people around the world to read more, and we believe that Kindle is a great way to get people to do that. 48% of people using e-readers say that they read more while reading on e-readers and paper. If Kindle were to use this in an advertising campaign, they will signal to people who want to read more that there is an easier, more efficient, and environmentally friendly way of reading. According to a Forbes survey of 2,000 American adults, 81% stated that they don't read as much as they want to. Kindle, being a product that makes reading easier and more efficient, makes every aspiring reader a potential customer. Essentially, the main purpose of this campaign will be to paint Kindle as an alternative to books for people who want to read more. In conclusion, Amazon's Kindle has an incredible potential customer base, if marketed to people who aspire to read more, by marketing its improvements over paper books and e-books and cell phones in cost, environmentally friendliness, and efficiency. With improved marketing, Kindle will be able to sweep the ebook market in the coming years.